<clears throat> Hello, and I'm Karas of the Pipe Smokers of Ireland. Um, hope you're doing okay today. I'm uh, I usually make my videos on Saturdays. For my residency uh, post on Mondays, so this will probably be this is Monday when you're watching this, but this is Saturday when I've done it. And uh, yesterday was that atrocious, that, that horrendous uh, attack uh, by Muslim cowards on the innocent, the the the. Uh, civilians in Paris attending a concert some attended um, a soccer game some were just at restaurants Here it asked me to say a few words to the to our community um, as a pastor to bring some kind of pastoral comfort to people that are rightly troubled by what went on and uh, it was difficult it was difficult it was difficult not because I do not have a means of comfort um, or that I don't have words to comfort people in times like this but that I know that not all of you are believers in God and not all of you are Christians <clears throat> and as we've rightly found in the book of Ecclesiastes especially there's under the sunners and there's under heaveners and under the sun people are usually atheist or agnostic or uh, pagan they have really no relationship with the God of scriptures where he talks about people under heaven and that are people that live with a belief that there is life after death that there is a heaven they didn't buy into the lie John Lennon's song imagine really the only source and reason to find comfort in chaotic murder and evil has to be found in a belief in someone who has ultimate authority there's the pen ultimate or not ultimate and then there is the ultimate and for those of us who have faith, we believe God has the ultimate authority. He's the ultimate judge. And even if people escape justice on this earth, they will face a far severe, more severe justice when they someday appear before the judge of the whole earth. Only God knows the end from the beginning, and only He can make good out of evil. And it's surprising how many people become very critical of um, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when evil happens. And they ask the, the old Theodosius question, how can a good God allow evil things to happen on the earth? And um, the reason and how he can allow evil to happen on the earth is because he's a God of love. And what that means is that because he's a God of love, he created us to be free and to love him back freely 
He gave us the free will to either love him or hate him, obey him and serve him, or live in rebellion against him. And because he loves us, he gives us the freedom to choose whether we are going to love him back and be grateful to him or not. And what that means is, before he set anything in motion, he saw it on paper, saw it in his mind. And he established a way to redeem us because he knew that we would fall. And he knew that before he ever created us. Why did he then create us? Because he wanted us. For some reason, in his own heart, he wanted us as part of uh, his panoply of creation in heaven. God loved us, wanted us, and he felt that creating us was worth the risk. But a risk that he took with a remedy should we ever find ourselves in a place of condemnation and in need of a savior. For all of you, my friends, that are watching that are theologians and apologists, please know I'm trying to break this down in a non-theological language for those that are listening. And what I just said falls short, really, of a better explanation. Ecclesiastes does not hold any punches, and that's what we've been discussing, and we're in the fourth chapter today, verses 1 through 3, which I wasn't going to talk about today in, in, uh, out of respect for the dead in Paris, but thought to myself, maybe it would be appropriate in light of what this book says about reality and what just happened and in fact it does address it saw Solomon in the fourth chapter I think hits the nail on the head as they say this is how verse 1 of Ecclesiastes 4 reads Again I looked and saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw tears of the oppressed, and that they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors, and they have no comforter. And he goes on in verse 2 and says, in looking at all this, that it would have been better to never have been born, that happier are those people that died. He said, and I declare that the dead who already have died are happier than the living who are still alive. And then in verse 3, that the child that has never been born is better than those of us that have been born and live. Because he had a right uh, a right perspective of the kind of life lived on a, in a world where people are fallen. And where at times we're capable of living like the animal world tooth and nail. As good as it gets here it won't last. As bad as it gets here, it won't last. Things always run in cycles. But uh, we are being revisited now by what was going on in the medieval world from the 4th century on, when Islam began to take root in the earth. I am not ashamed and I am not afraid of any of you that want to take issue with me about this because it's absolutely unarguable. For 17, 1800 years, the world has been impressed with this uh, evil religion. 
although I know very I know a few Muslim people and are aware of many who are good people they're good people but their religion is evil but for the most part those who are not impoverished and those who have the luxury of uh, being being involved in a mosque where um, there's religious fervor being railed against the Western culture they get to be on the part of the struggle of part of the warriors as they, as they call them and basically that gives them the freedom to take out their rage in every kind of lawless deed you can imagine against people that have never done them any harm people that are non-combatants in other places because their chief strategy is terror always has been ironically they were able to go virtually undefeated until they faced a Frenchman by the name of Charles Martel Charles the hammer and he defeated them because he was not afraid to be as barbaric against them as they were against him this is what gets in our way when we try to fight a war against people without conscience who do not plan on obeying the Geneva Convention and we're trying to pipes angry with me today won't stay lit I packed it too tight So the French president, I think, got it right when he said that he was going to mete out justice and retaliation without mercy. There's a Christian I had tension with that, sure. But Christians are not the ones that fight these kind of wars. There are Christian soldiers, but on the whole, are we? Our faith has to do with somewhere else and imposing our uh, our Christian morals and ethics onto the soldiers and un onto those that are civil in their authority I think is uh, out of context we've got Christian straddle as it were one foot in the world one foot out of the world and uh, sometimes fighting this world's wars requires ruthlessness and requires severity in order to as Romans 13 says strike fear in the heart of the evildoer I think that's just they afford no pity no mercy to not only the people that they kill like they did in Paris but in places where Christians cannot get out of the country and they live in Muslim run countries they are crucified and raped and dismembered and disemboweled some of them are cannibalized Boko Haram is known to feed uh, their captive girls human remains some Christians are thrown to the dogs after they're dead the most horrible the most inhumane thing you can imagine is done against Christians to the tune of almost 200,000 Christians a year around the world that is virtually there's a blackout in the Western civilizations so that we don't know this more Christians have been martyred in this last century than all centuries combined did you know that are killed without mercy without law except Sharia law which is basically lawlessness if you're not a Muslim 
and they'll continue to do this as long as their religion survives it will continue to do this whenever it begins to become at least eight nine percent of the population they'll fight for their rights they'll cry foul they'll cry prejudice they'll cry that their rights are being violated they'll do anything they can in a free society that wants to treat them civilly not understanding that part of jihad is that they take root in a society by acting friendly until their population is big enough to where they can show their true colors in times like these were prophesied by Jesus Christ there'd be wars and rumors of wars people be rising up families against one another there would be so much violence that men's hearts would grow calloused or fail them because of fear of what's coming on the earth <clears throat> and this would all take place as the earth virtually begins to disintegrate in its civility um, to the point of utter chaos and anarchy And when it looks like it's just the zombie apocalypse, Jesus said, look, look up in the heavens, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing nigh. You know, I think Pascal's wager is fair. It makes propositions that are laid at the table of both a believer and a non-believer. Basically what it says is you can either believe that there is no God and live as you please without fear of accountability or you can believe there is a God and live according to his standards. And either one of you may be right or wrong. But Pascal said the most wise and rational wager is on the part of those who believe in God. Because if you don't believe in God, and you're right, and there is no God, there's no harm and no foul, but this is all you get. This is all the heaven you will ever get. Living down here, dealing with what just went on in Paris, was that heavenly to those people but this is all you get that, that that would be all the heaven they ever got all the heaven their loved ones ever got bereavement death injustice oppression cruelty savagery political dishonesty disenfranchisement one race against another it's the best you're going to get Mick Jagger was right in the song Gimme Shelter. Rape, murder, it's just a shot away at any given time. And more acts are like this will send people in a panic as they begin to understand they are not safe. And their safety cannot be guaranteed unless they give up their freedom. God doesn't want to take your freedom away from you. Therefore, he allows you to live in a world of your own making, as evil as it might be, with everybody having the same choice as to whether or not they're going to make plans on what's going to happen after they die. And Pascal's wager, if you're right, there is no heaven. If John Lennon was right, no harm, no how, but this is all you get. This is all you're living for. This is all you get. Which is why the existential, the existential philosophers said, if this is all there is, let's just kill ourselves. Because it's all meaningless. It's all vanity. <clears throat> 
And then he said, if a believer, if the, if the, excuse me, if the non-believer has wagered there is no God, and they're wrong. And the Bible just might be right. They risk an eternity in which they will one day appear before the judgment seat of Christ without an advocate, without a defense attorney, and they will be judged, and they will be cast into hell, which basically was where they chose to go. Christians, on the other hand, if a Christian is wrong and there is no God, and we believed in vain, and we were moral in vain, and we were trying to be as best as we can in vain, and all that we did for God was vain. We at least enjoyed ourselves more because we lived in peace. We were better to people than people that don't believe in God. We were more decent, uh, more ethical. We lived in uh, peace in our conscience and in our heart. There's a lot of good things that we get from believing in God, which is what Ecclesiastes said as well. We can live in contentment all the time, in perfect peace all the time, even when our lives are in upheaval. Because we know God's in control. This is going to last forever. The Lord will turn even what's evil into good. But if we're right, then we gain everything. And we lose nothing. And we have heaven to look forward to. Eternal life. Eternal life is not a word that means just duration, but it means quality. That there is a life ahead of us that is going to be so far and away better than life here. That uh, if we understood this, then we would go through our sufferings thinking this does not even compare with what's going to happen to us when we get to heaven and we we finally are in an environment where God alone rules. That's the wager. Place your bets. If the uh, person who wages against belief in God that there is no heaven, there is no hell, we just live and die like dogs. Then the wisest man in the world at the time said, those who are dead are so much more fortunate than those who have to continue to live here. And those who have never been born, <laughs> they're far and away more fortunate than those of us who were, because they never have to live in this kind of world, of this kind of inhumanity, and where this kind of stuff is happening, and always has happened. You see, the answer is for us to be smarter, intellectual, to get an education. No. A poor man, an uneducated poor man, hillbilly, he can kill you with an axe or a gun, but an educated man kills you with an atom bomb, with a nuclear device. Have you ever noticed that no matter how smart we get in this earth, we never get beyond moments in time when in our intelligence and technology we develop better and even more cruel ways to kill each other? The Bible says that there are basically two ways that you die and there are two judgments after you die one is that you die in your sins the other is that you die in the faith those that die in the faith have an altogether different experience the three seconds after they're dead than those who die in their sins without a savior without any atonement without any redemption without any forgiveness of sins in which they will be taken into account or taken to task for everything they've ever done or said or did 
in rebellion against God on this earth. There are two kinds of judgments. One is the judgment that's appointed to every man that dies and woman that dies in which we're brought before the judgment seat of Christ. But the consequences in that judgment are completely different. For those who die without a Savior, they have to face an angry God with no defense and no hope of mercy because all the mercy was extended to them here. No more mercy. There's no more grace. Only the fury of the living God. Fury that Jesus took on the cross for all those who believe. But if you don't believe in Jesus and you don't believe in God, then you'll have to stand before him one day. It's the risk you're taking without any advocacy, no mercy, no grace, only wrath. The other judgment at that judgment seat is for Christians. And the word judgment for them is completely different than the word that we derive crisis from for those who are lost. <clears throat> Christians have a judgment in which they're judged for rewards. Only rewards. Some will get more, some will get less. We all will be blessed. A lot of people don't realize what Jesus did on the cross when he died for our sins. He took upon himself the penalty for every sinful thing we've ever done, said, thought, did. We owe a price before God. That's what the first judgment is for. That's what the crisis judgment is for. It's time to pay up or you're going to pay big time in terms of punishment. <clears throat> but for Christians, our debt's been paid. That's what Jesus said when he said, it is finished. The Greek word tetelestai means paid in full. It was stamped on all kinds of receipts and documents at the time of Christ. Receipts and documents that had been paid already, stamped tetelestai. And that's the word he used when he said, it is finished. I've paid it all for them. The innocent suffering for the guilty as a substitutionary sacrifice for them in their place. That's what Christ died for you means. For means in your place for you as your substitute. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Sometimes it makes us more miserable than people that don't believe because we have a tender conscience and when we act out and do the things that we know God disapproves, it makes us feel guilty. It makes us feel awful. Not because we're afraid he's going to hurt us, but because we don't want to hurt him. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It just means we're forgiven. And not only forgiven, but because Jesus paid the price for us judicially, justice was done on the Son judicially on the cross, we're also justified. And what justified means is is that all the evidence of everything we've ever done against God is destroyed. The devil can come up and say to God, hey, you remember when Pete Bertolero did this? And the Lord will throw him out of the court because there's no evidence of any of that, past, present, or future, because Jesus paid it all. And none of it is allowed in court. So we're not only forgiven, but we're justified. And when we appear before the judge, the very one that judges us, Jesus Christ, will step down out of his seat of authority to judge us and stand beside us as our defense attorney. And then he'll show us the receipt, which is his pierced hands and feet, just like they take a, <coughs> a receipt or a paid bill and they push it down on that little sharp pointy thing, you know, in restaurants. <clears throat> A pure certificate means it's been paid in full. And Jesus is our certificate. When he'll stand there and he'll show his hands and feet, their bill's paid.
that's not just doctrine. That's not just a tenant of faith. It's not just nice pie in the sky. But it is a means of our comfort. It's the means of Christian peace and comfort. And I want to leave you with that today. In light of what's happened in France, we don't know when our time is up or not. But we can know when our time is up where our destiny is going to lie. That we'll be able to see our loved ones again that have died in the faith. There'll be a great reunion. The best is yet to come. This is the Pipe Pastor talking to you today and wishing all of you uh, peace and a point when you can come to know the Savior and have for yourself the means that all who believe in Christ have to live in peace in a world as hellish as this one's becoming. God bless you.